Ah, hi, it's Donna here from Blind and Knitting. This is one of my whip bags I'm going to go through today. So today we're going to go through my whips and what I have planned for the next while of knitting. So welcome everybody. I hope you've had a lovely Christmas break over in, um, in New Zealand. I'm in the lower North Island of New Zealand and it has rained and rained and rained and rained and it is still raining. Uh, we had rain this morning, although we are getting the occasional nice day. It's very muggy, very hot, hence no woolens. I would just asphyxiate if I had woolens on today. But it is very muggy, very hot. But it has been a lovely break. I've thoroughly enjoyed my holidays this time. I took a good chunk of break and I was really able to get my head in a good space. So we'll talk a little bit about mental health. I want to talk a little bit about my garden because it's just going so well. Um, I want to go through my whips and no FOs today. Uh, last podcast, my last podcast was number 25, if you want to look back, where I went through all of my knits for 2023, 2022, gosh, I don't want to rush the years, uh, so I pretty much finished all my whips, uh, and so I had no FOs as of the second week of January, so I had one week of extra knitting to finish everything on the first week of January, so one week over is... It's not too bad. So if you want to look at that, you're welcome to go back on that one. But this one is, is moving forward and what my plans are for the future. Welcome if you've been before. Welcome back. If you are a new subscriber, and I've certainly had quite a few of those, which is wonderful. Hello to you, and I hope you enjoy my podcast. So I am blind and knitting, which is because I am legally blind. I have just a wee tunnel of vision about, um, I have 95% blindness. So I have about five degrees they go by of sight, which is like a little tunnel. Just enough, thank goodness, to do my crafts and knitting. Uh, so um, I do give some tips on managing site issues and uh, while you're doing crafts etc and also just talk about my journey and challenges around that um, and I yeah predominantly do knitting that's my passion I am a social worker and and I know that having a hobby or a passion or something that blows your hair back is so good for your mental health and knitting has been my saviour um, many times in my life um, where I've just felt that I just haven't been able to move forward or do anything and just knitting one stitch at a time has put me down and, and got me where I need to be. So um, if that's part of what you want to hear, you're welcome. So I have watched so many podcasts and I've done quite a bit of knitting because as I said, it's just been, the the weather has been, it's been crap. It's just been crap. <laughs> oh, but, um, you know, in some ways I wake up in the morning and I go, oh, it's raining again. And they go, yes, it's raining again because I can sit and watch podcasts and knit without guilt. So, yeah, I've really tried to get a few things in. I think last time I talked about motivation and how to try and get your mojo back and I know that I said that my walking mojo I've always been a, um, a f I've always been a fit person and always you know really tried to keep fit but over the, since I've really started my sight has really deteriorated I've found that quite a challenge and I have lost my mojo for walking and so I, I'll, I won't go into it again because I did explain in episode 25 the concept of how to get that mojo back and so I've put that in place and I've been for one two three four maybe four five walks in two weeks so I'm really happy with that and come back feeling really great and really satisfied and uh, so even yesterday I got up at six o'clock or Kenzie got me up at six o'clock. Kenzie's my guide dog. If you want to know more about my guide dog, you can go to her Facebook page, Kenzie the Guide Dog. Follow her. Um, so my guide dog, she gets me up at six every morning. And so I got up, I put my sneakers straight on, which are sitting right by my bed and my, and my walking clothes. 
and I got up and went for a walk with Kenzie and then when I came back I thought now don't go inside don't go inside and then so I went straight to the garden and I picked weeds and planted and potted around in the garden for a little while and then I thought right while you're on the job you can clean that chook house out so out came the shovel and poos going everywhere uh, and you know I just I really like oh I'm getting it back I'm really getting it back so I was quite excited by that and I came inside afterwards thinking yes and what even <laughs> made it even better was my partner was just getting out of bed and, and he said oh morning and I went morning I've been for a walk I've done the gardening I've cleaned the chook house out yeah just bam it was good yeah so I I feel really proactive at the moment and sort of moving forward. Now in saying that, um, I am a social worker and I'm very aware that this, for some reason, this end of January and February are super challenging for people. Um, I, yeah, I'm, change of seasons has always been one that I've recognised as a transitional time for, for us mentally and, and struggle, but this just seems to be a very critical time. I think, you know, after Christmas, Christmas often shows up the, the great stuff in families, but it can also show up the not so great stuff, you know, and that can get slammed in your face and shown in, in, in all its bad glory. And, um, yeah, and then we start having all these thoughts about maybe we could do this and get motivated and, you know, exactly what I've done and get motivated. But sometimes we get to that stage and we try to get motivated and we just sit there and go, actually, it's just as shit as last year. Excuse, um, you know, I'm sorry, the swearing. If you don't want to watch swearing, don't. I, it's just who I am. I just want to be real. I've got to be real. I've got to be me. So, you know, some people can just say, well, it's just as shit as last year, or it's worse, or, you know, what have I got to look forward to? So, seek help. Yeah, seek help if you're in that position. So, I don't want to make this too heavy, because this is a podcast about knitting, but I do like to add a bit of mental health, and I will. So, I do acknowledge that this is a very stressful time for some people. Please seek help. Talk about it. Just talk, 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 you know. Talk. If you can't talk to people, talk to a journal, talk to a book and get it down on paper. That is so beneficial for you as well. So, um, yeah. So, what are we going to do? So, um, oh, gosh, what else has happened this last two weeks? I, <laughs> I, had, I had so many birthdays. January for birthdays. My gosh, my family. Easter, evidently, is nine months before that, so <laughs> happy Easter eggs. Um, so I had my great niece's birthday, my sister's birthday, my niece's birthday, and my two grandsons' birthdays. Is that all? In, in just a few weeks. And then next, in the next few weeks, I've got my son's, my partner's daughter, and my sister-in-law's. <laughs> so, boom, boom, boom. Birthday, birthday, birthday. So that's eight birthdays in in three or four weeks. So, but it's it, it's lovely too. So we just had birthdays, birthdays, birthdays. Thankfully, we just had one dinner where we celebrated everybody's, which was really nice. And yeah, I didn't do anything for my biggest for my big birthday back in September. I turned. And um, I didn't do anything. I stayed low. I, so I'm having a birthday present. I'm giving myself a birthday present in a couple of weeks. And I'm off to Australia for a few days. Just with a girlfriend. We're going to go shopping. And my, I love Darling Harbour. It's one of my favourite places. And I, all I wanted to do for my 60th is just sit somewhere beautiful like in Darling Harbour with the lights. And have dinner. And um, that's what I'm going to do. Belated, but I'm going to do it. Uh, so my next podcast won't be, it'll be uh, before or after I go to Aussie. I'm not sure, depending on time, but that's in two weeks' time. So I'll work it out somehow. Uh, so I'll be able to tell you a little bit about that. I'm hoping to go to a wool shop that is at the end of the light rail run. Uh, and the reason I found out about that is a lovely podcaster and 
New Zealand here who's Australian. She went over recently and she told me, well, she told she, on her podcast, I think that people are talking to me personally when, when they're doing their podcasts. I hope, I hope you feel like that with me too, but I certainly feel like that. Uh, she, she was talking about a, a knitting and wool shop. Uh, I think it's called Sisters, 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 or something, something, Twisted Sisters. So um, I'm looking forward to going to that. But yeah, so that'll be something to look forward to in a couple of weeks' time. So let's get down to the whips. Right, so what I did after I had been through all of my projects last podcast, I've put them all away nicely. It is summer, so I don't wear too many. I might wear the odd shawl. And when we go out for barbecues or something, I'll take a shawl to wrap around, you know, uh, when it gets a little nippy in the night air. But, yeah, I just don't wear a lot of woolens at this time of the year. It's too hot. So they're all tucked, all folded away, all layered up, all ready to go for. Um, and there's a couple of that I haven't even worn yet. Um, my, my weekend slipover I haven't worn yet. And I have worn my terrazzo vest once. So two garments I'm really excited about looking forward to wearing. So after that, I got all of my um, projects bags. So I keep saying um, all of my project bags and I laid them out in front of me in the lounge. And I put the wool for the projects that I really wanted to work on in them. And then I printed out the pattern in, for whichever project and put the patterns in them. And then I checked the needle sizes and I, and I got the needles ready and put in them. So I should be able to just pick up a project bag and say, yep, it's got everything I need in there. The needles, the wool, the pattern. Although obviously I don't, can't, I struggle, I can't read patterns. But for some reason, old habits die hard and I just love to have that paper pattern in there. There's something about it. I do use an app called Knit Companion, which helps me greatly because I can um, stretch it out and, and it has a yellow line, highlighter line that you can follow as well so you don't lose your lines. And that, that's that been a, a godsend of an app for me. I've really, really enjoyed that. So I don't actually read the written pattern. It's just a habit. And I, I just like having them there I suppose if somebody turns up that's a knitter and I can pull it out and say oh this is what I'm knitting or um, if I just quickly need to write something although the risk is that I write something on there that's important and I don't look at it so we're going to go through them I have uh, five whips and I have also joined my first ever knit along Cal K-A-L knit along so I'll fill you in on that as well. So just five whips, but effectively six whips because of the knit along. So I'll put this down. Um, if my sister's watching, yes, my little knitting lady is sitting with me. I have to name her. I've got, I want to give her a name. You know what I noticed the other day? She has the cutest, she's got little, she's even got little um, pantaloomas on with lace bottoms and be, uh, boots with <laughs> it's just it's just super 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 cute my sister gave it to me for looking after her dog and but her glasses they keep her glasses do fall off I can relate to that mine do when I get sweaty I'll have to stitch those on I need a name for her though she reminds me of my mum and my mother-in-law who were both knitters and one was June who was my mother-in-law and Lois was my mum so I don't know no, I don't know what to call her. If you've got any ideas, I'd love to give her a name. But she just sits sits proudly on, she actually sits on this chair that I'm sitting on normally. Um, and I just have her in here in my office slash craft room. Uh, and yeah, she's really cute. Right, let's pick up a whip bag. I'll just have a drink of water because I'm parched. <laughs> got lime in it, a lime in it, lime from out of my garden. My lime tree, which is a miniature lime tree, has just started fruiting for the first time. Right, let's go. Whip number one, which is in my lovely bag that I brought at uh, Khan, uh, Knit August Nights, which is a Skeins Run retreat. And this is my Birkin. 
Birkin by... Oh, oops, I should have the pattern in here, shouldn't I? Yes, I do. Birkin by Caitlin Hunter. Uh, if you can see that, it's a four-ply colour work. And I have started this last year. This was one of my incompletes because I wasn't in any hurry. It's actually quite a challenge for me to do with my site. I don't, I'll never do brown again, but um, I just, I'm looking forward to the, so I've put quite a bit into this, I, I'll just make sure I don't drop stitches, because I forgot to put my rubber bands on the ends of my needles, I need to get some, I need to get some needle stoppers, I usually use rubber bands, so I'm still at the, at the colour work, but I've done quite a bit of the colour work, uh, so that's what it's looking like, uh, that's where I was last podcast, so I have done quite a bit, and I, I I won't say I'm enjoying knitting it because I yeah have to I, I have to sit forward and I'm really really watching it. Um, I'm enjoying the challenge, but I'm, it's physically it's quite hard because I get really uncomfortable. But this is a stunning wool. It is uh, ha Happy Go Knitties, which is a New Zealand indie dyer. And it is a four-ply merino silk yak. It is just soft, soft, soft. And I also, the ferrule that I'm, uh, the ferrule, the um, colour work that I'm doing is just a one-off four-ply that um, I brought from Squishy McDo's, which is another New Zealand um, one. So, yeah. So I've got a little bit more just to finish off the flowers. And then there's another row of the, of the leaves, which I, leaves, which I quite like. Um, I'm going to try this on today because I haven't tried it on yet, um, which, is, which is a risk. And um, this is going to be my main work for a little while. Uh, what I want to do is get through the colour work to when it's just knitting and nice and easy and I can just knit, knit, knit without sort of any pressure because it isn't, uh, it, um, the process is tough. I'm looking forward to the product. So that's whip number one. I'm really excited about the end product. It'll be lovely in the winter. Oh, sleeve needle popping out. So my needles are all in there ready to go. Whip number one, Birkin by Caitlin Hunter uh, with four ply merino silk yak. Whip number two, I'm just picking up the bags without, what am I making here? This is, right, so I got this from Squishy McDo's. I actually really love it. It's pink, it's a sort of a salmon-y pink and gold, um, semi-solid. And it's, yeah, really pretty colours. Um, I was going to do socks, but it doesn't, it's not nylon based, so I can't do socks because they just won't last. So I thought I would knit a shawl or a cowl with it. And I have no pattern because I've got my sock pattern in there. What I did do is I brought this beautiful um, Aurora, Aurora 100, which is a mohair uh, from uh, Deanne. McDougall, and I can't remember what her business is called, sorry Deanne, um, and I thought I'd join the two together so that either make a cowl or a shawl. So I have looked at some cowl patterns, but I'm just going to, I quite like that bandana one with the, um, and I did print it off, I think it's in, they're still in, oh no, there it is, I have got it. So this is the plan for this, I'm all organised <laughs> Um, it is da, 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 tiny writings, pearl soho, and it's the bandana cowl. Um, I watch one of podcasts I really enjoy is called The Knitting Stew. She's a stewardess and um, does her podcasts while she's traveling around, and she's made several of these. So I thought that'd be quite nice. It'll be a lovely way to use that wool. Or both walls so that's haven't cast that on but that is sitting there ready to go with my needles in there the pattern 
the system's working so far. So that's whip number two. Oh, the sun's come out. Look at that. wonder how long that'll last. <laughs> it's a novelty. It's a bit bright. <laughs> Not used to you. Right, whip number three. Whip number three is, this is, now I cast this on yesterday. I brought, When I brought the Happy Go Nitty Wool for my Birkin, I fell in love with it. I had made a, a Libby Johnson's um, summer top called Sesha out of it as well. And it's beautiful, beautiful wool. It's beautiful to knit. It's so soft. It's so silky. And so at the same time, there was a pattern that came out called the Lunchtime Tea, I think it was called. And the, it had some colour color combinations that I just fell in love with. And so I bought a, a lot worth, a, a pack, a kit to make the lunchtime tea. But in the thinking about it, I actually didn't like the lunchtime tea. It's a, it's a crew neck up here uh, and comes over with no sleeves it's just, and it's just straight. And I know, with, I'm quite big busted, that though that style does not do me any justice. So I changed my mind on the pattern, but I ordered the wool, um, and okay, it's there's eight different colours, so it's kind of hard to to show you the colours actually, because that's some of them. I'll show you the rest. So there's, they're all striped. So the, the plan is to do eight rows of stripe in the colour. And then it, it drops down to some paler ones. So, which is this lovely pale one. It's actually on the knitting. And so I looked through my patterns and found... Let's see if it's printed out in here. It is printed out in here. Oh, God. I'm so clever. <laughs> <laughs> so the one I decided to do I had a choice of two I was going to do either the rocket tea or the apogean apogean the apogean by olive nuts or the rocket tea well the rocket tea one um, so the rocket tea is by tennis fiber arts that's it there. It's just a lovely, plain, simple v-neck. It does have some pretty um, um, little holes down the patterns, down the, what do you call them? Yarn overs. Yarn overs down the sleeves. And I think it might even have them down the side. I haven't got that far yet. But uh, so this is the pattern. Nice, simple tee. V-neck is much more becoming on a bigger busted lady. So Rocket Tea is the one by Tennis, and I cast on yesterday and started my stripes. So the, the, where is it? I'll just find the, get the, so we've got all of the sort of pinks and burgundies are the, pinks, bur burgundies and brownish, rusty browns are the colours for the stripes. And then it's this colour, which is just scrummy, and it's called uh, Apple Custard by... It's, it's Mardi, which is the Silk Yak Merino, um, Apple Custard. Custard Apple, I think. My site's not very good. But it's this really cool sort of, I don't know if you can see that, um, goldy, greeny colour. It's not a colour I'd wear just as a straight colour because it's it's an autumn tone colour for people but mixed with these pinks I'm really liking it so three rows of the green three rows of the green and then three uh, eight rows of the pink stripes so that's the plan is three eight three eight three eight and to go from the light light pinks through down to the darker pinks now because this was a pack and I bought it to do the lunchtime tea that had no sleeves and the rocket tea does have sleeves I was a bit worried about whether I would have enough wool and about two years ago I bought some lovely four ply wool to knit a uh, it's called the raindrops 
and I can't remember the designer, but raindrops, and it's a really pretty summerish cardigan uh, jumper. And I knit this with this four ply merino that I'd bought in the local shop in town. And I was a bit naive because I said I I hadn't chose a pattern, but I loved the wool. And I said I'll I'll have a, a jersey lot. I usually have fourteen skeins to a jersey. I don't know why I said fourteen. I must have been thinking long sleep big. Anyway, oh, where is it? I'm looking for it now. Oh, there it is. And so I brought this. And <laughs> when I ordered it, it was in lockdown. Uh, it's got sort of burgundies and purples and golds and rust flecks in it with this nice smoky pink. I bought it. And when I went to pay for it, it was $260. And I went far out and she said oh that is expensive isn't it but I'd kind of committed myself to get it I decided I would do one one really quality wool jersey a year and not panic too much about the price that was a little bit in fact it was double what I would normally pay but I'd committed myself and she'd ordered it in and so I paid for it well I've made <laughs> I've made two lovely tops with it and I've still got three skeins left so that'll be why because I had enough for two full jerseys uh, where was my head I have no idea but hey ho it's done so and this goes really well with the um, colours so that's going to be my first stripe uh, the palest stripe which is I've already done this is across the back so it's I'm working across the back and down the front V so it's knit in the flat until you get under the arms and then you can knit uh, in the round so that is the pink one there that I had and of course that will mean that I will have enough to do this do the sleeves by, by adding that I'll probably have plenty left over but well don't know so anyway, so this is the Rocket T. I'm going to be working on this consistently as well. So those are my two garments that I've got on the go. So my Birkin and my Rocket T. A Rocket T obviously is really good for autumn. So I want to kind of get it done. But it's, once I've got past the neckline, it's just straight going and it's stripes. I've never knit with stripes before and everybody that knits with stripes always says how fast it is because you just keep working from one stripe to another. Um, so it's the first time I've ever done stripes. So there's a first. So I've done everything else. Well, not no, not everything else, but I've done you know difficult patterns, etc. And um, I've never done a simple stripe. There you go. So that's whip number three. Two jerseys and one shawl. Now the next whip is, and again in my. Those two were in my, these bags I made. They are Japanese knot bags. And I just bought some old curtaining from the op shop and made up the pattern. And this, the, the handiest thing. So they've got one long strap and one short strap. And you put the long strap through the short strap. And it knots up like that into a little ball. And away you go. Really handy. You can hook it over your hand, your arm, um, or... When you're knitting, you can hook the hook it over your arm and have it open. Uh, I think they're designed for J in Japan rice carrying rice, which makes a lot of sense because it will just knot them all up so that the rice hangs and sits in the bottom of this bag. But th they're so handy. Japanese knot bag. So this one, my next whip is a shawl, and uh, I have talked a little bit about this before because I've wanted to do this for quite some time. This is called the Rubicon, Rubicon Point Shawl, and it's by Erika Sufka, S-U-F-K-A. Apologies if I haven't pronounced that well. Um, and my printer ink is dying a bit, so it's not showing the best, but it's striped, and it is one stripe is sort of um, dark, sort of patinaed, and the other is a very pretty lace, so it's uh, quite a cool looking, and they come down in points. So two skeins. So the lovely, lovely Marina from Strawberry Patches 
what a honey she was. She sent me some wool. She sent me one of her beautiful eight ply, just lovely merino wool. And it's just soft, it's gorgeous, and a pink. I mean, <laughs> that's my colour. So she sent me that, and when I was at August Nights Khan in uh, Napier last year, I won in a quiz night a, a hank of what Skeins is trying out, and it's a dipped wool, uh, and it's this sort of patinaed, moody, dark sort of mulberry purples and murky greens and so it's got that real moody patinaed look which I think will be perfect for this Rubicon so I am combining those two together to do this Rubicon um, and I have made a start I'll just show you this oh. there we go so I have done the the moody and I've started the lace so have a look at that I think they go really well together don't they and um, so it is pointed so you knit that's going to be one of the points so it'll have stripes going up and that's obviously a small stripe at the corner so each stripe will be bigger going up it uh, and at the same time they will be having a point on it so that hence the Rubicon word I suppose um, yeah I, I'm really quite looking forward to seeing this done it'll be a lovely warm scarf because it's eight ply pure wool both of them and yeah quite excited about that one so that's the Rubicon uh, again thank you Marina and if you're watching there's that's the start of my shawl layer so that is one, two, three, four. That's four whips. And I said I had five, didn't I? This one here is my last whip. <sighs> it's been a little bit of a mission, actually. This is wool that I brought when I went over to um, Wollongong to visit my son. And I decided I wanted to visit a wool shop. And this lady had the most lovely, lovely, lovely homespun, pure wool. She had hand dyed it and spun it herself. Uh, one of the weavers and spinners ladies in this shop called Finzar, just out of Wollongong. I, I talk. I give more detail in episode twenty five, I think. And I'm really excited to use this, and I, I, it's quite rustic. So it kind of, to me, sort of said it needed to be something like. Jackety, and then I saw this podcast where a lady was talking about a denim jacket that she had made. I couldn't get the pattern, but my lovely knit group I'm a member of a lovely knit group here locally. One of the ladies found me the pattern that is, and so that's a denim jacket or a knitted denim jacket. So I love the idea of this being knit as a denim jacket so it's going to have you know like the lapels and everything that a denim jacket would have but oh, sometimes I can be a dumbass there's only 375 grams uh, so there's not enough that's the original pattern there that I wanted and it's called core but this one is the same so it's not enough and of course I got to the stage where I decided it would look fantastic and it's ideal it's really gorgeous and you can see that hey ho it's not enough so then i started thinking well do i do the sleeves in a different color or do the back in a different color and i thought no no that's just going to look tacky so i've had to change i've yet to decide i did look this morning and i i'm thinking more waistcoaty um, or vest so I think this is going to end up as a vest um, because I don't want this close to skin it will be quite um, I have knit a swatch and washed it and it doesn't really soften greatly it's not it's not I mean it's it's not bad it's it's lovely 
but it's, it is rustic. It'll be super warm. So that's what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do, I might even do another we can slip over but not make it so oversized. I think this one will be more fitted. So although I say this is a whip, it's an undecided changed whip. There is my knitting. Oh, that's a marker. <laughs> I don't know what that's come off. I'll put that aside. That could be a concern. There is, across my legs, my whips uh, for for the next month or so anyway. I'm really excited. So ma ma mainly two garments and two shawls and one possible vest. And really excited to, to get those underway. However, I have been going on a bit of a learning about socks journey. And I have talked about this a little bit. And I must confess, I am one of those people that watches a podcast and think, if you just do socks only, I'm... I roll my eyes, and I'm so sorry if that is you, if, you know, sock knitting is your love. So I thought, right, I'm going to get this mojo. So I've worked on that all last year, my getting mojo and my pleasure out of socks, and I, I have. I've discovered that I love knitting socks. Uh, well, love the right word? Enjoy knitting socks. And so I have really got into it, and I have made five pair of socks over the last 18 months. Uh, not a lot, but I'm because I've, I mean, I've done plenty of booties and things like that, so I've kind of got the general idea of the construction, but the heel flap, and yeah, it took a little while. And also learning to do whether I liked Magic Loop or whether I liked the nine inch circulars. I don't mind both. I prefer the circulars, I think, because I just get on with it. Do, 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 do. Whereas, you, you know, this magic loop, you do have to do a bit of this, which isn't, it's not too bad. So I did do 1DK Sunday Socks by Petite Nuts, and that was, I did on magic loop, and I enjoyed knitting those. That was my last pair of socks. The others are all four plies. So I now feel like I've got the idea of construction, I've got the idea of, um, you know, which needles to use, what walls would be right, and so this is where the cowl comes in, the knitting, uh, knit along comes in. So I decided to make contact with all of the podcast, New Zealand podcasters, and talk to them. I think it's really nice for us to, as a, to be a community. So I contacted the five New Zealand podcasters that I know and, or, and follow, and we've set up a chat page, a group, a chat messenger chat page, New Zealand podcast chat page. And so we've been communicating with each other. And so there is Yarns from the South, there is Unwind and Knit With Me, Strawberry Patches, a cup of tea and a yarn, and myself. Oh, no, and Pearl Jade, and another uh, young woman called Annie, and I, sorry Annie, I have forgotten what your podcast is called, because it's on my phone, and I can't get it, And but I did watch it the other day, and thoroughly enjoyed it, so, uh, so there's six of us, six podcasts, six different podcasts, and some of them have got two, so there's actually eight of us in this group. And we've been chatting a wee bit, and so we've all got a bit excited about this, and we've thought, oh, we can set ourselves challenges, and we've got some great ideas. Uh, Jade from Pearl Jade, uh, hi Jade if you're watching, she made this lovely suggestion about if one person, when someone's knitting something one month, and then the next month, the one of the other podcasters has to take inspiration from what's been made by that podcaster to knit something using that as inspiration, whether it be the colour, the style, the whatever, you know, you, you find your own inspiration. And then the next podcast of the next month, oh, I thought, that is brilliant. I'm looking forward to that. That's really getting the juices flowing because I'm not very good at that sort of free flow um, stuff. So for me, that's really exciting. Then the next thing we started talking about was doing little gift exchanges. You know, I have like... Um, minis and 
and have a gift swap. So um, Marina from Strawberry Patches suggested that one. Hi, Marina. And yeah, that's also really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. So you, you are giving and getting, and yeah, I think that's lovely as well. But the other thing we started chatting about, uh, and this was my suggestion because of the sock mojo that I've been trying to get to get into, was how about we have a knit along for socks? And a couple of the podcasters said, well, I'm already doing Stephen West's knit along. And I went, hmm, I'll have a look at that. Now, I can't say that I've ever knit anything of Stephen West's. He's a bit out there for me. I do love some of it. There's a shawl called... Um, Brick, making bricks, I think it's called, or creating bricks, that I really would like to make. And But the last one, last year, 2022, I thought, no, that's not for me at all. I didn't like that one. Sorry, guys, if you did make it. Some of them with colours were stunning, but the style was just weird. So I have never really looked into too much of Stephen West's stuff. But what I thought when I started thinking, considering this, knit along for the year so what he's going to do is present one sock pattern every month so one sock pattern a month he started with two in January and then one a month for that for the year is this is a great way for me to learn much more about the at the depth of knowledge of socks so I've done my vanillas I've got into that I've, I've enjoyed that so now I can start thinking okay let's try and do some ferrules and some laces and some cables on them so why not do this knit along with my other podcast colleagues and the Stephen West one so I signed up for it so I'm starting the Stephen West podcast now it's <laughs> nearly the end of January so of course I'm too behind already but hey ho so one is called um, knitting bricks or constructing bricks which again is the shawl that I want to make so that's number one and number two is called the trellis sock which is uh, I haven't printed the pattern off with these because I figure there's going to be so many of them which is a, pl a, a ferrile or a variegated pattern and then on the top he has trellising in a plane on top cabled through them it look, and it looks really cool so I'm quite looking forward to that so I've cast it on I haven't got to the trellis in yet but I've done the rib or he says two and a half inches that's a heck of a lot of rib to do so I've done just over an inch maybe but two and a half inches so uh, this will so when I first decided to do the cowl I thought right you know what I don't have any sock wool I didn't, I didn't think I had diddly squat none so what the heck am I going to do so I did go for a deep dive in my stash and I found this one which I brought from um, in Christchurch out, Outlaw Yarns I think it's called and it's a flecky f one four ply and so I thought that would be the perfect main colour and then this I again I was get no I I was given this in my pack at Cairns it's well worth going to Cairns with all the stuff you get uh, it was in my welcome pack and it's called Rover and it's Merino Possum sock it's called no it's not called Rover it's called Soccer 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 Matician I think um Oh, and I've had no lie, it's not, it was Rover, Rover that I got in the, I actually don't even know how I got this, it's deep dive. It's gorgeous, it's possum sock yarn for plies. So that is going to be my trellises. Oh, it's a shit of a colour again though, it's, it's like my Birkin. I don't know, you know, Donna, come on. I really need to knit with really bright colours. But I did get it cast on. Once it's cast on, I'm okay. It's that blessed cast on. Um, a, f a good friend of mine, Sandy, she cast on my Birkin for me. <laughs> if you're watching Sandy, thanks. I perhaps should get you to do my socks. But uh, I did get there. So two and a half inches. And it was 84 stitches. And now one of the things that I have learnt as in knitting socks is that I've made them all a bit big. So I was going for 72 stitches, 
and I've, and they're all quite big. So I kept thinking, right, whenever I make socks, I'm going to do 60 stitches or 62 or whatever the, you know, there's a kind of uh, go-to number that a lot of podcasters and a lot of patterns use, around 62. Because I thought, well, that will fit me, because I now know that a 70-something doesn't. Um, but this one said cast on 80 stitches. And I thought, 80? This is going to be huge. But I knitted a couple of rows, and I thought, oh. So what I did is I asked my podcaster friends, um, ah, well, you know, actually I asked Lisa from Unwind and Knit with me. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for your knowledge. Um, and she said, just trust the pattern, and... Yeah, it actually, I think it will fit. I don't know how 80 stitches when 60 is my go-to, but yeah. So that's been cast on. So I am in this knit along uh, with Stephen West and also with our podcasters to do some socks in the knit along. So we'll, um... but then I thought, because I've promised myself to use my stash I've, and I've got some, all my walls set up so that I don't have to buy any. But then I thought, I don't have any sock wool. These were the only two sock yarns I could find. I know I lie, I found one more um, in my um, thing of my <laughs> containers of <laughs> wool. So I thought, well, if I'm going to support local, which I like to do, I contacted um, Wine and Knit with me Lisa's and Marina from Strawberry Patch and said, can I get some sock yarns from both of you so I've made some orders and hopefully I'll get those next week and I can show you them in the next podcast so I've what I've tried to do is buy enough to be pretty much set for the year so I don't have to buy any more through the year I might have to you know there might be a pattern that might come up with something that is out of the blue that I haven't can't, just can't do so that will be fine but generally I have from between the two of them, I have bought enough to buy to make. Should be a year's worth of socks, well, if not the bulk of them. So I've already got one, two, two enough to do two lots of socks, and I've brought enough from each of them to do three or four. So that's eight, and two is ten. So there might be two that I have to do. And he did say that he might do some DK ones. Well. I don't know if I've got any DK sock, but I could have a look right through. I could work that one out. I really don't want to have to spend a lot of money on wool. I did with Unwind and Knit with me and Strawberry Patches, which I will I have, will have the links below too if you want to go to them. Their walls are beautiful. Um, so uh, that's my whips and my and a cow. I've never done a knit along. Never done ferrile or pattern socks, so it's all new, all new, new, new for me. Um, I because I was enjoying socks being my car car knitting and easy knitting because they were vanilla. I'm guessing that that might not be the case. So I'm, what my plan is to not stress too much about missing the two January ones. I've started one of the January ones, but is to get my Birkin and my Rocket Tea and my shawl to a stage where they are just uh, potato chip knitting, just just round and round, and so the sleeves and so the sleeves and the body, so that 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 then will be my easy when I'm knackered and don't have the headspace. I don't know why I'm hugging there. <laughs> Um, don't have the headspace. That'll be my knitting for that. And my socks will be my learning challenge interest stuff. So it's a little change around, but I think I'm going to learn quite a bit from this cow. Um, Stephen West is a pretty impressive designer and with a very impressive following and history in the knitting world. So I'm sure that I will learn learn. A lot from him and his podcast his uh, videos are very clear and concise so that'll be good too he'll follow back every sock up with with the video yeah that's the plan oh that's one two three four five whips and a and a cowl and 
Yeah. So my veggie garden, I was going to talk a little bit about that, is just flourishing. I picked Brussels sprouts the other day. So Brussels sprouts, a cabbage and a collie uh, out of the garden. My beans are starting to come up. I'm a little bit late with everything because November was a bit of a hiccup for me and, and the weather's been miserable so everything's a little bit late but I'm assuming with this hot moist weather and it has it's just flourished so um silver beets really I've got another cabbage coming we had strawberries off, off my strawberry plant but um that's the first for me I've never grown strawberries before uh, never really had the space so it's lovely to have the space and I've planted a blackberry a raspberry and a blackberry raspberry and that currant and a guava so we'll have lot, lots of lots of nice berries to eat love berries fruit trees have not done so well this year it's not been a great year for fruit trees last year we had a great year so you know that's just the name of the game really um but it's such a buzz. I mean, as I said yesterday, when I went for my walk and then I went and cleaned the chook house out and potted in the garden, um, my produce that I brought in, you know, and put in my fridge, you know, the cabbage and eggs and all of that. I know, I, I, I know that the whole planet is going through this financial um, challenge because of COVID. Um, and everybody's really struggling, but and I don't know what the prices are over in the other countries, but it was nineteen ninety five for a pumpkin here the other day in the supermarket. Eggs are almost impossible to get because there's been a law change around eggs. So at the moment the racks are closed with eggs. And my daughter went to buy a watermelon because her kids love watermelon, and it was twenty five dollars. So, yeah, things are looking a bit grim, and I know that this isn't just specific to New Zealand. I know it's everywhere, and, yeah, so I'm really <laughs> so, so thankful of my veggie garden. Bye, dear. Saying goodbye to my partner. Of my veggie garden, it's, a, you know, a blessing in lots of ways for my mental health as well. Now I was going to give a mental health tip. Um, and so I usually give those when I'm considering my where I'm at. Uh, so at the moment, I am trying to get some balance back. I've had Christmas and birthdays and barbecues and uh, and holidays. I've had lots. I took nearly a month of just working part time and having a good chunk of holidays. So I've had a lot of wonderful time and I've thoroughly enjoyed it but I've got to get back into so I decided to create some balance again now the way I do this and everybody's different is there are eight areas of human existence now if you google that you'll find them but there are so there are eight areas that we all have that create us as a whole person so if you wanted to look at yourself holistically in, in every area you want to look at these eight areas so <laughs> you're going to test me with I, sh I haven't got it written down so you're going to test me so they are intimacy which is obviously your partner family which is an obvious one hobbies knowledge what, what's your learning work that can be voluntary and paid spirituality now that doesn't have to be religion that can be you know, anything that is sort of your spiritual being, um, how you cultural and all of that. So spiritual, spirituality, uh, wealth, so your finances. And the last one is friends. So what is your friend group like? So if you want to look at your whole world really holistically, Often what we tend to do is say, right, we're just going to, I must, you know, sort my life out and you only look at one area. And so you've, you're only doing just a, a part of that pie of who you are. So the pie of eight areas. Um, and so it's important to look at the whole lot. So when I'm journaling, I try and make sure that I journal considering all of these areas and make sure that I've considered something in each of those areas. And at the moment, uh, what I do like to do and have been doing to get some balance back in my world is I have a I've downloaded an app 
and for the life of me I can't think what it's called but there are so many on the on in the place in the app store there's one called habit ball which isn't too bad which I quite like but um, I'm trying a different one this time and what you do is you just put your habits that you want to ensure that you've got some balance and, and see whether you're doing them or not so I've put the eight areas of human ex existence so each of those and I've also added a few like like um what have I added play guitar um I play guitar I've played guitar for 30 years I've learned guitar for 30 years I don't practice so you know every time I pick the guitar up I'm <laughs> relearning I'm not and so I really want to try and get into the habit of getting back into my guitar and brushing Kenzie is another one that I put there and drinking water is another one that I um, want to ensure that I'm doing. So I've added some extras. So every evening I tick off whether I've done something positive within those areas. So, you know, have I done something physical, have I done something that will, is for my spirituality, whether it be meditation or just smelling the roses or, you know, doing my breathing exercises. Have I have I done something for work? Have I done something to support my wealth and financial situation? Have I brushed Kenzie? Have I drunk enough water? So I tick them all off. Uh, and it, it really does... It, you know, when you look at the whole month afterwards and see all of these ticks, you can look and see whether actually guitar, <laughs> I'm not one tick. Isn't it? I've been doing it a month and not one tick. That is terrible. And that's one of the ones that I really would like to get back into. I have to, so what I need to do now, this is the key, is if there are any that you don't tick off or you look at the month as a whole and you start saying well actually I really haven't done anything too much for, to do with wealth and finances or as guitar or I'm not drinking my water then you've got to look at what are the blocks what is it that's actually preventing you from doing that you know what what is it that stops you from doing it and then you can start thinking okay it's because I can't say my guitar's in another room because it's not it's in the lounge my music's in another room and you know you just <laughs> Or, you know, the, because I'm not very confident at it, I don't like doing it with people around. And so you've got to wait till you're on your own. And so you've got to find all of these blocks. What is it that's actually preventing you from doing it? And then put a plan in place on how you can manage that. And, or you've also got to think, well, actually, am I being realistic? Is, is it, you know, do I not just not have the mojo for it? You know, which is not the case for guitar because I do love playing when I'm playing. Um, I just don't like practicing. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> so I have to find my mojo in that, in the, in the practicing part. But it's finding the blocks. So that's my tip for you today, is just Google eight areas of human existence. If I, if I do remember, I'll try and put it down the bottom, but it's really easy to Google. Just look at those areas every evening for a month, and have a look and make sure that you're trying to live a really holistic life. And what are the gaps and why? There we go. So that's my mental health tip for you. I've had some wonderful comments from people. I had a lovely lady from Massachusetts who uh, has made contact. Hi to you. You know who you are. And uh, yeah, I, and uh, several other comments and people making contact. Uh, and I'm just loving that. What a community. So thank you. Don't, you know, please feel free to contact me. I, I do enjoy the contact with people. I guess that's me. Uh, yeah, have a good next few weeks. I'm not sure whether my podcast will be in three weeks' time or just early of two. Probably more likely to be three. And then you can hear about my Aussie trip. And I will have got my purchases from Strawberry Patches and Unwind and Knit with me. So, knit on, mental health, keep it going, ticking along, be conscious of it. If you are struggling, talk, 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 talk to people. Bye for now. <laughs>